Hi, Jonathan. Congratulations on the win. Um, okay, my question for you is, uh, from the start of this year until the World Cup commenced, Afghanistan's top five didn't really have that many impressive numbers. Um, say, uh, Ibrahim Zadran's average of 47.8 was the highest, and the next best was 34 and odd. So now, with six 50-plus uh, scores in consecutive games, big partnerships, what has led about this transformation? Well, I, I think the this, we've been working really hard at our batting and, and doing the, the basics. I know it's very cliche, but the way that we train, um, the, the things, the way we think about our cricket, certainly when batting, the way that we accept responsibility at times as well, I think you're starting to see hopefully the, not the penny drop, but we're starting to see also the confidence in the players in their own ability. You know, um, there's such uh, an amount of talent and just given a bit of structure or given a bit of a game plan, understanding what makes them the best players that they can be, A, uh, tactically wise, but also the way that they train and they think about themselves and the way that they think about training and how they go about it. Um, and so when it comes to match day, it's not just sort of rock up and it's left to luck. It's sort of, um, no, I'm, I'm here and I'm in good form and I'm ready to play and I deserve to score runs. And, and I think hopefully we're seeing that and the guys can take this from this tournament and take it also into the next uh, important games coming up. And uh, how about those white, whiteboard targets? You were well ahead this time when the match got over. So your thoughts on that? And uh, how do those targets work when you're batting first? Well, I think when it's batting first, it's a little bit different. I think it's more a case of communication and, and, and the targets will change. When it's chasing, the target obviously never changes unless it's stuck with Lewis, obviously. So there's a bit more focus with regards to breaking it down into smaller targets. But sometimes, you know, certainly like the Pakistan game, chasing 280 and starting on naught, it's a long way away. But if you break it down, it seems a lot more manageable. Um, so those sorts of things, uh, little things, just, you know, motivating the players and, and then keeping them in touch with where we want to be. And um, it's also a feel-good factor. If you, if you know you're on the right track, it's also a nice feeling as well. Um, but for batting first, you obviously you, you see how you go. Um, you know, every, you know, most games, there's over 300 as your average. Um, so we, we don't want to limit the guys on what they can do batting first. We want them to assess the conditions and make sure we go out there and, and get as many as we can. So um, it just worked out that we chased today. Hi. Uh, you opted to uh, bowl first today on a wicket which is known uh, uh, to support batters more than the bowlers. Uh, getting comfortable with the idea of uh, chasing uh, now and how do you look at it, uh, the, the two successful chases, how do you look at it uh, going forward in the tournament? Well, I think you've got to look at the conditions and you've got to look at the pitch and what suits our team. I, I think for our spinners always to bowl with a dry ball is always going to be crucial and getting a bit of turn. We saw the way Noor bowled um, last game and the wickets he got. Um, so it's, uh, we're very, very lucky in that we got, you know, options to be able to select for different conditions. Um, and, but also different conditions when it comes to weather, um, and the effect that the weather has on, you know, the pitch and the outfield. So, um, you know, I'm under, you know, nobody's, um, got a hundred yet. So that's the next challenge. Someone accepting responsibility and batting for a longer period of time and make sure we get hundreds. Because you see a lot of hundreds scored in the tournament. If we want to, that's the next sort of frontier, the next barrier. You know, Gerbaz has scored a few hundreds recently. Um, you know, and Ibrahim, it's, it's, it's about the middle order, you know, three, four, five, six, being able to score hundreds as well. So that's the next challenge. And I have absolutely no doubt that the, the players will be able to, um, you know, in the future, and hopefully it starts. Uh, hopefully that starts uh, next game. Uh, hi, Trotty. Just hi. To, in terms of the psychology of chasing, I mean, you, you've mentioned about your whiteboard and the tactics there, but we've seen with a team like South Africa, for example, who can bat so strongly up front, and mm. then you know sometimes the chasing it just gets in your head. Like, what sort of mental work do you have to do, if any, to just get players ready to chase? <laughs> Well, I think in this day and age, you know, my generation or generation before me, you always, I think with coaching players, you always coach them to expand their games and push the boundaries with regards to how quickly they can score. I think with a, with a side like we are, um, you know, growing up having played T20, it's actually almost the other way around where, just, you know, we saw two in batters there in the last 10 overs and how quickly we scored. I mean, we scored 40-odd runs in five overs in the last 10. So I, 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 I can't remember exactly what the stats are, but it was on, 
it was close enough to that. Um, so those sorts of things, those positive messages, you know, take responsibility when you're in the middle. Make sure you're in, at, you know, the last ten overs, and it's amazing how quickly you can score um, by just playing good cricket shots. And 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 that's, I think, you know, what we have is, you know, very talented T20 players. And again, giving them a bit of, you know, it's okay to go at six and seven and over. You don't have to go at 15, 16 and over. So, um, and at times they do naturally they score that quickly anyway. So. It's really exciting to see, and I'm really chuffed for the, for the guys in the change room, and it's it's a great feeling for you know for all the other coaches as well um, to come to World Cup and you know have, uh, be playing some nice cricket. Um, if I can ask about the support staff that's been preparing them for the way they're delivering right now and executing mm. the mix that you have um, of some international mm. staff who haven't even been to the country, including yourself, mm. um, and then a couple assistants that you have who have been pillars of the Afghan cricket history. Mm -hmm. In terms of the way that mix has helped prepare them and communicate with them and sort of build on the story of the Afghan cricket, how helpful has that been in, 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 in reaching this moment? Well, I think it's important, you know, you, you get the blend right and the combination, but also the characters have got to be, you know, the right characters for the dressing room. So that's the most important thing with regards to coaching and players as well, you know, cr creating and breeding the right uh, players and having the right culture that creates players that can perform under pressure. Um, so it's a mixture of, you know, putting the players, you know, through their paces of training, making sure that they're ready for a match and, and training really hard. And um, so that playing the match feels, can sometimes feel a little bit easier than practice if we make it a bit tougher. So certainly we, under no illusions, we need to keep working at our fielding and, and, and get our catching right. And um, and also, you know, at there's this other stages like today where we saw, are we taking wickets through the middle? I think sometimes we can continue to do that a, a little bit better. And I, I thought uh, we got the field placing, you know, pretty spot on today. So there's always little areas to work on that all the coaches help with, you know, going to the mixing part. And, you know, we have meetings now and again, but it's also not just about communications. It's the relationships with the players and also the language um, and the communicating that. And um, we, as, as a management, it's important that you also start developing, you know, local coaches, Afghan coaches as well. So getting that mixture and that combination of who's ready to coach the international stage. And so they can take the lessons learned back to Afghanistan and, and, and help grow and nurture the players coming through. So that, that's what I'm always, you know, for and uh, getting that uh, combination right. Hey, so uh, talking about Umar Zai, uh, given that he's been improving game after game in uh, Azmatullah Umar Zai. Yeah. So uh, since uh, we've seen him improving game after game in both facets of mm. play, are there any conversations about giving him the new ball at some stage? Well, yeah, I, I had that chat uh, in a previous game. I'm not going to say which game, and I thought it would be a good time, but it, it, we didn't go with it. But, you know, I thought he bowled really well today. His first two, two overs went for three runs. Uh, picked up an important wicket as well, breakthrough. And I think he's a fantastic player. I think as, as far as talent goes, he works really hard. He's a fit boy, um, good athlete, and catch as well. Um, so I think for him, sky's the limit. Uh, you know, we've got some really talented young players and it's really exciting to see. And that's what he wants to do in the game. I think he's got that type of character as well. Um, and whenever you see a guy like him do well, it always makes you feel good because you're so happy for him and he's, he's so chuffed with, you know, to be able to hit the winning run so Afghanistan will meet the world to him. Would have been nice if it wasn't a, a chance, but you know, I'll be mentioning that to him later. But um, I thought of the way that he played and a natural striker of the cricket ball, I haven't seen many better. Um, so, yeah, really happy he's in, uh, he's in our side. Uh, Coach, uh, going back to the batting group bit, you spoke about uh, making them realize to own up and the transformation from T20s to ODIs. Mm. Saying all this is actually one thing and delivering uh, the same at the biggest stage is another. I'm not asking you to reveal the trade secret, but if you can just elaborate, elaborate on how actually you made it happen. What is that one thing that has actually worked with the batting group, if at all you can pinpoint on? That? Well, there are a lot of things. I, I think f for me, it's about creating a culture a training where the players feel like they can grow and develop their technique, but also the mental side of the game. As we know, cricket is such a mental game. Um, so I try and create with the other coaches all the time. How can we make the, you know practice 
better or tougher for them so that when it comes to playing the game, it's, it feels, you know, similar. How can we, you know, recreate the pressure of a match? Um, and are there times where you need to take your foot off a little bit and, you know, sort of build their confidence? But it's, again, if, I always feel if you walk out of a tough net having played really well, that gives you more confidence than somebody throwing you a few half volleys or, you know, a few cut shots. I think players, I think the players, and I, and I hope that they, they realize the strides they've made in, in these matches, but also there's still extra room to be done, uh, you know, with back ball and in the field. So there's still three games to go, but, um, you know, we'll certainly enjoy tonight's uh, victory against a very good Sri Lankan side who, you know, recently won the T20 Asia Cup. They were in the final of the Asia Cup. Um, so, you know, really happy and, um, you know, we move on to Lucknow tomorrow. Um, hello, coach. Uh, first of all, Ajay Jadeja said this before uh, Afghanistan's match against uh, India that they have been playing just for 20 years. Other teams are playing for 100 years and look at mm. them right now. In this World Cup alone, you have beaten three sides that they are previous champions. Since start of the World Cup for you, how much of a growth that you have seen in this team um, that probably take forward the 20 years of the foundation that has happened for this team? Well, I think you always see teams, you sort of start progressing, but it's just getting over the line and the confidence of winning. You know, we've been so close. You know, the Asia Cup, we got eliminated in, you know, very uh, unfortunate circumstances. We were so close. We chased down that in, in, in 37 overs or 290 in 37 overs almost against Sri Lanka. Um, and we, before that, we played a series against Pakistan where we should have won, you know, a few games there. So we've been so close. And I remember saying before the, before the, before the World Cup, we just got to win a few close games and just get that belief. But also the, the belief in themselves as a player, but also belief in their methods as, as, as individuals, but also as a team, all 11 out on, on the field. So... Um, you know, really tough, but it's something we've got to look after. You know, Netherlands is our next game. They've played really well so far, and it's going to be a, a good, tough game against them. So um, every game from here on in is in, it's a World Cup. It is tough. All games are tough, no matter who you play against. So um, looking forward to the flight tomorrow and the preparing for uh, for the Netherlands. Just a follow-up on this one. This is a little bit. Uh, does it, uh, when you look at it in a way that you have defeated three sides that have won the World Cup before, does it weigh on, or is it like a proud moment or it's just another game in the World Cup for the team? Yeah, I, th I think so. You always take the, the positives from it. You take it and keep it for when you under pressure. You know, the matches, the way that we played against Pakistan, the way we played tonight um, with the bat, but also then defending against England, you know, at, at Delhi. So with bat and ball, take the confidence from those. So no matter what we're doing, whether it's batting or bowling first, you know, we take a lot of confidence from that. Um, but it's important that we, again, every game, and that's the beauty of cricket, and I say to the players, the beauty of cricket is if you're playing well, the challenge then is to back it up the next game. The beauty of it is, is if you lose the previous game, you have another chance to rectify it the next game. So the, the challenge for us is going to be able to, is to start again against Holland and um, at 0-0. Zero, zero. Thanks.